The story begins quite a while ago, just about the middle of last week, when the world was a very different place, with an old wise person called Flamolius. Flamolius hmm. was sitting on his porch peeling potatoes. He'd been peeling potatoes for a long time, but suddenly he looked up. And sniffed the air. <laughs> Cheese? Why? That's exactly what I need for my omelette. Come, Barabbas, my trusty goat. Let's go on an adventure. An adventure, said Barabbas. And Barabbas was ready for the adventure because he could also smell the cheese. Mm. Ah, I found it. And then uh, I've got some great cheese people working for me. They're the best cheese people in the world. I can smell the cheese. I'm a very stable genius. We're going to get through this together. I have a dinosaur, I have a tiger, and I have this lady here who's going to tell you exactly what's going on. Now, stay away from my cheese. And with that, Barabbas the goat kicked Trump right in the sternum with his big hoofs and released the cheese, and grabbed the cheese, and ran away from uh, Trump's tiny orange army. They were, of course, the Oompa Troompas. And then... The tiny orange army offered fake tan for everyone, offering $1,000 for the luxury of having fake tan. $1,000! $1,000 to have the Trump head's finest fake tan of all around, so everyone could look like little... Fake tan trumpets for one thousand dollars. Super discuenta, one thousand dollars. And then, the producer was wise on sage. Didn't recognize his word anymore. Everybody was becoming orange. Everything was so strange. So he put his cheese on Barabbas and walked away to a far, far away land where he could escape everything. He found, after days and days and days of walking, a population of people dancing naked. I'm on the fire, and then... <laughs> Went Barabbas the goat and fainted with a thud. Flamolius looked down on his friend, and when he looked up again, there was a man standing before him, naked and covered in soot, with a smile on his face. Who are you? said Flamolius. And then... The naked soot man did not answer. Instead, he took a step closer towards Formolius and stared deeply at him, penetrating Formolius' soul with his gaze. Formolius felt like he wanted to step back, but was deeply rooted in place. And as he stared into the naked soot man's eyes, he was aware of the multidimensional galaxies. And there was a sense, he had a sense of something very familiar. But he did not know what. The naked soot man continued to keep and hold Formolius's gaze. Formolius asked again, But who are you? Welcome, my friend, said the mysterious stranger. And as he wiped the soot from his eyes, Formolius could see it was Danny Bloody Dyer. That's right, he said, it's me, Danny Bloody Dyer. And this is my tribe. Dum, 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 dubba, dubba. But who is Danny Dyer's tribe? And what about the cheese? And what of Barabbas? Will Flamolius ever get home? Back to where he lives. 
A little bit of old East London. Do, 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 do. Hark! cried Fremolius, and sprang to his feet like a man who has just discovered he sat on his own quiche. The sight of Danny Dyer laying naked and prone before him provided a rather invigorating rush of adrenaline, and so with a face the colour of toasted beetroots and both of his nipples pointed directly at the moon, he faced the tribe, and in a voice like curdled buttermilk, he screamed. The pole of milky death go be upon you. Flamolius, empowered by the bright moon and giddy with passion, waved his tiny wand at Tunny Dyer with a sound like a contemplated wet fart. Danny Dyer flipped inside out like a popcorn kernel and gobbled himself up in a single gulp. As Flamolius gawped in astonishment, wonder the tribe of water-based life forms gathered in a circle around him and they began to sing their ancient song Initiation. <laughs>